So Mike, what you wanna get? <laughs> uh, Wendy's now, I'm not. <laughs> this most recent time I need to feel better is because I recently got dumped. So I really don't like happiness and touching right now. <laughs> I think it's stupid. Uh, I think that's mostly why you getting on my nerves, sir. <laughs> I feel like you holding her like she gonna run and that's kidnapping. <laughs> Not see illegal, sir. I just don't like happy couples because happy couples make it look easy and it's not easy. It's hard to pick. I'm a bad picker. <laughs> I don't find out I don't like stuff till it's way too late doing anything positive about it. I'm already out with you. Nothing I can do. <laughs> Turns out I don't like a whole bunch of like yelling, like arguing, like the willingness to argue. It gets on my nerve. I'll tell you when I find this out about myself. I took this young lady out to go get something to eat. Uh, she really wasn't that cute, I'm gonna be honest. So we, we end up at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> Don't, don't judge me, sir. You didn't see her, okay? You don't know. You don't know what I had to go through, all right? Uh, <laughs> at the time, my car, my car didn't exist. I was broke. I didn't have one. I didn't know. It didn't, uh, she was driving. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we pull up to the drive through It was a very romantic drive through It was very well lit and everything. <laughs> We can see each other perfectly. Uh, she orders her food, but dude couldn't hear her. He said, excuse me, ma'am, can you speak up? That's all he said to her. She went completely nuts for no reason. Started yelling immediately. How did you get a job? I know your mama don't love you. I said pickles, nerd. <laughs> she went nuts. After she gets finished cussing out the McDonald's drive through dude, she gonna turn to me talking about, so Mike, what you wanna get? Uh, Wendy's now? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not ordering from this dude. Why would you yell at him like that? I seen this movie, it don't work out for us in there. Yeah, drop me off, guy. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, drop me off. I'm not going nowhere with you, drop me off. <laughs> That's when she started getting real crazy. Started downing me, telling me I wasn't gonna never be nothing, telling me I wasn't gonna make it in life, telling me I couldn't read good. <laughs> the last was very upsetting <laughs> because you don't know where my literary skills are, okay? <laughs> I am getting gooder and gooder every day. <laughs> I practice. Keep my flashcards on me at all times. <laughs> Still think I look good without the jacket. <laughs> I just don't have it in me, man. It's getting to the point now where I think men and women are opposite ends of the spectrum. I really do. I think men are very stupid and very simple. And for some reason, ladies, you don't want to understand that. <laughs> we are like that from birth. That is not something we can help. <laughs> I don't know why y'all don't, probably, I think the reason why y'all can't understand it because y'all are different. Y'all are polar opposites to that. You, you guys are a lot more complicated. It's a lot more to y'all. And I don't even think it's your fault. I really don't. I think it's because as soon as you born women, you're born with responsibilities. As soon as you're born, they hand you little, they give you little fake babies to take care of. <laughs> and tiny vacuums and stoves and stuff. <laughs> then, then you start looking at us like, who's gonna help me with this? <laughs> Is crying, take the batteries out. I didn't give it to you. <laughs> My GI Joe don't cry, you got the wrong toy. <laughs> and you <laughs> and you wonder why women mature faster than boys. 
while we playing with make-believe stuff like Ninja Turtles, <laughs> you learn how to take care of babies <laughs> and cooking little brownies with light bulbs and stuff <laughs> is stupid. <laughs> Don't act like you ain't had that easy bake ridiculousness. <laughs> it takes six weeks to make a brownie in that silly thing. <laughs> you, <laughs> it, it was a good brownie though. It wasn't. It wasn't done in the middle. It was a good brownie. <laughs> I feel like I feel like they mess y'all women up from jump. That's what I feel like. I feel like they make y'all difficult on us immediately. As soon as y'all born, they start telling y'all stuff like, you are a pretty princess. Give you little dresses and stuff to make you look like a princess. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not a princess. Uh, you are not no princess. <laughs> Even if you were a princess, ladies, what makes you think I want a princess? You know how hard it is to get a princess? Maintain a princess? You know what princesses are? You read fairy tales? Princesses are in the middle of the woods. <laughs> surrounded by seven midgets and, and witches is trying to poison their fruit. Why are people trying to kill you, lady? What did you do? <laughs> No, I'm not kissing you. You ate a poison apple and fell out. You ain't even washed your face. <laughs> I just don't, <laughs> I just don't think, I just don't, I just don't get it, man. We just don't, that's why I never understood, I never understood the societal norm for men to pick women. It makes no sense whatsoever, ladies. You should never let a man pick you. It's borderline irresponsible letting a man pick you. <laughs> We are stupid. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how to do that. I was with a girl for years, and I hated her guts. <laughs> she made up words, and it was very upsetting. But she was pretty, so I laid it slide. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, sir. <laughs> I'll tell you the last straw. I couldn't take it no more. I had the patience. Last straw. We was, was on our way to bed one night. She rode over to me. She said, baby, in the morning, I'm going to start me a diet. I said, baby, you're beautiful. I love you. You don't need to start a diet. She says, I don't need it, but I want it. I said, okay, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to support you. What you should do, you should weigh yourself right now. Get you a base weight starting point so you can keep track of your weight loss, baby. I'm going to work out with you. We're going to do it together. She says to me, I can't weigh myself right now because this is my night weight. Fellas, let me explain something to you. So you can dislike your woman like I dislike your woman. There are some women out there that are under the impression that they weigh more when they go to bed than when they wake up in the morning. And who said that's true? Who said that? Who said that? Raise your hand so I know who I'm telling. Shut up. Was that you, ma'am? Shut up. That's, that's not true, that's voodoo, ma'am. That's witchcraft. If it happens to you, you're a sorcerer. And you say, that's not okay. If that was the case, it wouldn't be fat women. Just stop waking up, don't get out of bed. Sleep in, why are you up? If you burning calories, then lay back down. I wish I would hear a woman tell me, well, I just need to lose like five more pounds. Well, go take a nap. Go lay on the couch. <laughs> I think my problem is, man, I actually am a hopeless romantic. Like, I really do like the idea of love. 
I would love to have somebody to share my life with that. The idea of that is just intoxicating. I love it. It's just that being a hopeless romantic and single together just makes you creepy. Like I'm a creepy, <laughs> I'm a creepy dude. I do a lot of creepy things in the name of love. Like I stare at women a lot, like all the time. <laughs> like aggressively. <laughs> because I don't want to miss the win our eyes lock moment from the movies. Like what if, what if my soulmate is a late eye locker? <laughs> I don't want to be a premature eye unlocker and miss our moment before we've had a chance to be happy. I just think we speak different languages, man. I really do. I don't think one is better than the other. I just think men and women speak different languages. I think we spend so much time trying to get the opposite sex to understand us that we fail to try to understand the opposite sex. That's why we always missing each other. You tell our compliments we always missing each other. Men, we compliment women on things that we like versus something they may want to be complimented on. And I think y'all do it does too, ladies. I get this all the time and it irritates me to death. Oh, hey, Mike, uh, you kinda cute. Uh, you look like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is a fictional bear <laughs> with no fingers. I have fingers. I, I hate honey, and I got several different pairs of pants that I wear all the time. <laughs> that, is not, that is not a compliment, lady. Stop telling me that. Nobody wants to date Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and if you do want to date Winnie the Pooh, oh, bother. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just Just old. That's my problem, man. I'm officially an old dude. And I just, I can't, I don't have the patience no more. It's the first thing to go when you get old. I'm officially an old dude. I know what you're going through, sir. <laughs> I'm scheduled to be 35 this year, man. All down here from here. I hear you whispering. I know what you're saying if you're older than that. You're probably saying to yourself, Mike, if you think you're old at 34, then what that make me? And I'm gonna be honest, we are not talking about you right now. We're talking about me. <laughs> Why are you being so selfish? Why? Why old people so selfish? You've had your time. Uh, you <laughs> it's not so much the number, man, it's I feel old. Some things happen to make me feel old. For example, I read an article not too long ago. Society says the average man at 27 should be married. It's very depressing. <laughs> so I don't think society factors in things like maybe me and a wife at this point in my life can come together and fit in my mom's basement because <laughs> it's, not, it's not that big. It's finished, but it's damp. She ain't gonna wanna do it. I just can't relate no more, man. That's the, that's the worst thing about being old. I can't relate no more, man. That's why me and women, I can't, we can't get out of eye like because I, I can't text no more. Girls love to text message. And they got their own language, fellas. It's a, it's a thing called text language. They made up their own stuff. 
And that's frustrating because I didn't take that class. <laughs> I broke up with a girl because of a text message. She sent me a text message that said, literally, this is what it said. It's all it said. LOL, I L U, T T Y L. I, I have never been in the military. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Why are you texting me launch codes for no reason? <laughs> even, even, even if I was in the military, I wouldn't have clearance that high. <laughs> How did you get clearance that high? I can't date somebody that frivolous with national security. <laughs> what if these codes got in the wrong hands? My sister uses my phone all the time. I hate Facebook. I used to love Facebook. I used to be on Facebook all the time. It's one of my favorite things to do. Now I can't stand Facebook. Mainly because you people are getting on my nerves. <laughs> you are, <laughs> yes, you, sir. <laughs> You're taking Facebook too seriously. It is a game, it is fantasy, it's not real. You got 500 friends and you don't know half of those people. <laughs> you got 500 friends, but you're still in the bathroom mirror taking pictures of your own self <laughs> with your camera phone. What, all 500 was busy? Everybody had something to do at the same time? <laughs> Nobody can help you out take a picture real quick? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> Facebook is too emotional. I get lost all the time. Go leave a comment on something somebody posted. Somebody else left a funny comment, so I'll click on that person, check them out, see who they are. Then Facebook suggests somebody that could be my friend. Click on them, check them out, see who they are. I see a girl with you know big personality, and I, I <laughs> click on her, see what she's like. <laughs> People, this process goes on and on and on, and before you know it, I'm looking at 137 pictures of a cookout that I wasn't even at. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these kids? <laughs> Where did two hours go? This is dumb. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm old, but I'm the last one of my friends with no kids and babies. So it makes it hard for us to relate. We don't do the same stuff no more. I went over to my dude Jeff's house to go visit him and his boys. I walk in the house, find the Nemo's on TV. That's what's supposed to be on TV. You got little kids. I'm not worried about that. I'm actually a big kid myself. I actually kind of get into finding Nemo. This is my favorite belt buckle. <laughs> I'm a big kid myself. So I didn't have a problem with that. I sit down. I actually kind of get into the movie. Here's why I got upset, okay? We get to the point where we pretty much find Nemo before I realize I haven't seen a kid yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Jeff, where are the boys? He say, oh, they not here. They over their grandma house. <laughs> okay. Uh, then why are we watching Finding Nemo in the dark <laughs> together with that candle over there? I don't like it. It's uncomfortable, and you should have told me. <laughs> I just don't have it in me, man. I actually thought I'd have kids and babies by now. I really did. Thought I'd have kids and babies, man. It just turns out that I don't really, I don't really like kids and babies. <laughs> kids are nasty, sir, and I got carpet. I can't do it. <laughs> I babysit my niece and nephew all the time. That's how I found out kids are nasty. My niece is a very pretty little girl. Long hair. Everybody's always saying, she's going to be a heartbreaker when she gets older. And dudes are going to be after her. You got to watch her. And I'm like, yeah, you probably right. Till they find out how nasty this chick is. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's disgusting. I'm babysitting her one day. She goes to the bathroom. So I hear, I hear her turn the water on, so I figured she washed her hands. 
but I felt like I should do some parenting. <laughs> so I came up with a question to ask her, figured she'd knock it out the park, no problem. She came out the bathroom, I said, Sierra, did you wipe yourself? Her reply to me was, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay with mud butt anymore. <laughs> Got to move out. My nephew just is nasty, but like I stated before, men are stupid <laughs> from birth. <laughs> so his nasty is kind of funny. <laughs> Little girls are not stupid so it's just nasty. <laughs> I, <laughs> my nephew came home from school one day, walked in the house. He saw me first thing out his mouth. Uncle Mike, I farted today in school. <laughs> That's how he opened up the conversation, man. <laughs> it's not what made me laugh. What made me laugh is that he was very concerned. <laughs> Uncle Mike, I farted today in school, but don't worry, I smelled it off for anybody else could. <laughs> That's probably the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I don't know how farts work, but I don't think that's it. <laughs> Tell you how dumb I am as a man, I was on a date, I tried it, she smelled it all, I don't think I got none of it. <laughs> I don't feel like it was my fault. I feel like she was a very aggressive smeller. Like, why? Why are you smelling so fast on the first date? That's stupid. And selfish. I just don't have the patience, man. I feel like I'm an emotional dude, man. I feel like that's a misconception that men are not emotional. Men are very emotional, we're just situationally emotional. Like men are usually at their most emotional when we broke, we ain't got no money. <laughs> when, we, when we can't provide, we're very much inside of our feelings. Women are usually at their most emotional when they are awake for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with y'all, you gotta stop that. You gotta cut that out, I don't know. It's very alarming, I don't know why y'all, why y'all doing that. Um, I'm going to be honest, man. It was my fault. I lost a good woman because I was broke. It was my fault. I'm mad enough to admit that. It was a time in my life where I ain't had no money. But I had got some free movie passes, and I was like, hey, man, this is my time to shine. We're going to go see this movie. After the movie, we're going to go on a romantic walk, and we're going to talk because both of those things are free also. <laughs> Everything was going according to plan. We're in the middle of a walk. A bum jumps out of the shadows. Ask me for change. I'm like, hey man, you're ruining my life right now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no sir, I don't have any. I turn around, I walk off. She stops, digs in her purse, hands this man change. Immediately, I'm upset, right? Like, you saw me, you, saw, you was there, you saw me digging through my center console for change for the parking meter and you didn't say nothing. <laughs> you was quiet, you, you didn't say nothing, you didn't feel like it was no words need to be said. Now you all about change, now you the change lady, now you work for Obama or something. Listen, this is why I'm mad. <laughs> this is why I'm mad, because you are trying to embarrass me in front of this bum. <laughs> He is gonna go back to his bum community tonight. And when they gathered around the bum fire, <laughs> telling they bum tales for the day, he gonna have the best bum tail because he knows a dude who hangs out with women with way more change than he has. I'm mad because ladies, we are, we are a team. If we're on a date and I don't have change, uh, we don't have change. <laughs> don't have it in me, man. I'm an emotional dude, man. It's 
probably why I'm still single. It's easy to get on my nerves. Especially ladies, because I like y'all so much, I want one. <laughs> y'all get on my nerves, man. Mm. I feel like y'all get on my nerves more because y'all do stuff y'all don't have to do. I feel like you do it just to get on my nerves. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this, this bothers me. Ladies, stop pushing body wash on me. I use soap. I'm a boy. <laughs> There's two reasons I don't like body wash. One, when I get out the shower, it feel like it's still on me. <laughs> two, it uses words that I can't readily identify with, <laughs> such as exfoliation. That don't even sound positive. Why are we doing that to ourselves? <laughs> Sounds like something you lose friends over to me. I can hear the conversation now. You know, me and Mike was cool. We grew up together. We was like this, but ever since the exfoliation. <laughs> he not the same dude no more. It's because I'm moist. That's why I'm not the same dude. Against my will. <laughs> Don't, I don't, I don't like it, man. There's another thing that bothers me, ladies, that y'all do. If you have a child, and that child is older than one, and I ask you how old that child is, <laughs> can you please explain that to me in years, please? <laughs> that is not funny. I am tired of doing math in places I'm not supposed to be doing math. <laughs> I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. I was at the park not too long ago. A ball hit me in the leg. Turned around, there was a little boy. Thought it was cute, so I threw the ball back at him. He missed it, hit him in his nose, started bleeding. <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> Why would you let a stranger throw a ball at your kid? <laughs> You got to be a better parent. He's extremely unathletic, and I don't care what you want me to do. I threw it underhand. Where's his daddy? <laughs> so, so I walk up to the mom, and I asked her, how old is the little man? That's all I said to her. Her reply to me was, in a couple days, he'll be 106 weeks. <laughs> Are you mad at me? <laughs> I don't have a calculator on me. I look over at Lil Man, he's holding up two fingers like this ain't the first time she's done this. <laughs> I'm two. <laughs> he talks good. <laughs> I just don't have it in me, man. I don't have the patience. I got bad luck, man. Stuff just happens to me for no reason. I travel a lot. It's very frustrating. I do cruise ships all the time. I do comedy on cruise ships. And be honest, a lot of old people on cruise ships. <laughs> like an alarming amount. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. You just got to watch, you know, where you step in, you know. <laughs> I don't have a problem. I like, listen, I'm, not, I'm old myself. I get it, man. <laughs> I can prove it to you. This is how I know I'm old, okay? This is how you know when you're old. If you're, if, you're on, if you're on the cusp and you don't know if you're old or not, this is how you know. If you fall and no one laughs, <laughs> you are old. <laughs> That's how I know I'm old. It happened to me. I failed. Everybody, oh, sir, you okay, man? You, did you, get off me. I'm an athlete. Move. I played college ball. Get off me. <laughs> Last cruise ship I went on, man. I love water. Water is the best thing in the world to me. It calms me down. I could can, I can just I could stare at water all day. 
So that's why I love doing cruise ships. Uh, everything about the cruise ship was amazing. Uh, everything about getting to the cruise ship was one of the worst things that ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> in my life. It was a very long day. I was supposed to get to the port in Miami at 10.30 a.m. I did not get to the port till 3 o'clock p.m. They delayed my flight several times. They canceled it. I had to get on another flight to get there at all. What they didn't do was put my luggage on that new flight. So I had to go through the entire cruise without my luggage. They literally had to take me down to the theater department to get me some shirts. And no, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> my bright idea was, I'm going to go to these different ports in these different countries and get me some shirts. I did not know that foreign countries don't do fat people's shirts. <laughs> First stop was Honduras. I asked the lady where the two X's were. She looked at me like I slapped her child. <laughs> I got off the boat in Honduras. I got in a cab, or what I thought was a cab. Uh, he eventually dropped me back off, so I'm assuming it was a cab. <laughs> what, what was confusing is because when I got in the cab, I said, sir, can you please go take me to find some shirts? His reply to me was, no problem. We just got to stop at my house real quick. <laughs> no, sir. I don't, I don't want to stop at a Honduran house real quick. I feel like that's how you end up on the Honduran news. <laughs> Three things I did not know when I told this man to go take me to find some shirts. Number one, Honduras does not have traffic signs or traffic lights at all. <laughs> Nothing. They also, number two, do not have any speed limit or speed limit signs at all. They don't care <laughs> about life. <laughs> Third thing I didn't know is, sir, please go take me to find some shirts. Sounds exactly like, sir, please kill us both because <laughs> I was stuck in Fast and Furious 8 for like an hour <laughs> on my way to what he called a mall that just ended up being three stores in a plaza and it didn't have no shirts. <laughs> so I didn't get no shirts in Honduras. The next stop was Belize. Got off the boat, Belize. I said, I'm gonna go get me some shirts. What I didn't know when I got off the boat in Belize is that the universe hates me. <laughs> <laughs> it started raining sideways in Belize. I've never seen anything like it. It didn't have an origin point. It came down, stopped, and went like this. I, I was under an awning this low. I still got wet from here down. So not only did I not get any shirts in Honduras, I was down one shirt in Belize. Next stop was Cozumel, Mexico. I got off the boat in Cozumel. I'm like, forget these shirts. You're not dating me again, universe. I'm not doing it. I'm going to go find me a restaurant, find something to eat, something I can pronounce, and be safe. I thought I did just that. Got to the restaurant, found something on the menu. I said, ma'am, can you please give me the club sandwich? All turkey, no ham. If you don't know what a club sandwich is, it's a sandwich with turkey and ham. <laughs> I said, oh, turkey, no ham. She leans into me and says a sentence that changed my life forever. <laughs> she leans into me and says, uh, sir, the turkey is ham. <laughs> Are you mad at me? <laughs> is this a test? Are we in the Matrix? I don't know. <laughs> I just leaned back into her. I was like, ma'am, there is no spoon. <laughs> I know it's my fault. I do it. And I get it. I run into these problems all the time. And I find stuff out about myself and my, my surrounding environment that I don't like. For example, fellas, I don't know if you know this. But if you only make minimum wage as a man, you can only really talk to minimum wage type chicks. <laughs> Can't really venture out past that too far. 
If you ain't got no money, you gotta mess with chicks with problems, issues. <laughs> Just girls going through stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you know, girls suffering from like chronic dry eye. <laughs> it's a lot more annoying than you think, sir. <laughs> if you haven't been through it, you don't know. You look like you got a, you know, very moist-eyed woman right there. I don't, I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> Did you snort just now? <laughs> don't be ashamed. That's a badge of honor, man. Comedians, we want to make you snort, cry, and pee. If I can get you to pee, I get a prize. I'm looking at that lady right there. She's been crying. She all two steps away from peeing. I'll tell you when I found this out, like I, I, I got, I went to, uh, I found this out, man, about myself. I went to, uh, went to the bank, uh, bank teller, probably one of the sexiest girls I'd ever seen in my life. Um, I walk in, I get in her line, I'm staring, she looks good, I'm staring. Uh, I notice uh, she kind of looked back up at me, like we kind of had like a little moment for a second. <laughs> Uh, that's when she smiled at me. I'm gonna be honest, I peed a little bit on myself. <laughs> no shame, ma'am, no shame. Not a lot. Just enough where I can't say it didn't happen. <laughs> I feel like y'all being real judgmental right now. <laughs> I get up to the counter, I give her my account information and everything, she's doing her thing and I just couldn't hold it in no more. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, the next time that you get hungry, I'd like to be the man to feed you. Uh, she looks down at her monitor and replies, well, I don't think we both can eat on $8.37. <laughs> I don't trust you no more. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm Mike Paramore, man. Y'all have a good night. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much.